Okay, so here we are. Um, I want to look at God's Word, we, and as we go into this new year, I've been struck with um, uh, the, the tension that we have in our life between um, the, the capacity to take care of things ourselves and our need for God to uh, empower and take care of things for us or through us. And there's a tension in that. And I don't know about you, did you guys have a storm last night? My goodness, you know, I, this is what happens when you live on the sound, I guess. Now it's like everything hits you. And we even heard trees breaking in the night, and but this time they didn't fall towards our house. Actually, when I came out this morning, the one tree right in front of our house, the, a neighbor's tree that would have grown up and blocked out that water view, went over. <laughs> God works all things for good. Just, I'm just saying, you know. Uh, of course, I was probably out there in the night with a shovel cutting the roots, but I don't know, you know, it's a, it was a miracle. Anyway, uh, we got up this morning and uh, total blackout power failure. And uh, uh, that means the alarm clock isn't even going. And uh, it's all, it's all scary. And uh, you know, trying to get a shower and, and get dressed and everything in total darkness is a really interesting phenomenon. And I, I was so worried about getting socks that match, but then Mark reminded me, you have to get the shoes matching. That's the most important <laughs> if you don't get the shoes. You know, and he was insightful and he did share it. Was, I won't talk about the time he got two different shoes, but um, so anyway, I felt like this has been a miracle day all along, but I was, I was struggling in the dark and trying to bump it into things and trying to figure out how to, to operate when you can't see anything. And, uh, and I thought of the church. <laughs> I can't help it. I just thought of the church. You know, and, and uh, how, how much uh, it seems like we find ourselves trying to take care of things on our own, trying to do the best we can and plan and strategize and pray and work together and serve and all those things. We do all of that, and it feels like we're bumbling around in the dark, hoping nothing bad happens. And, and um, today, uh, the scripture we're going to look at reminds us that not only is God in control, but that he wants to be in control of what happens to us, what happens through us, what happens uh, around us, and if we would just stop blocking and let him do that. So our scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which many of you probably know uh, quite well, but I'll, I'll read it anyway. Um, now about spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be ignorant. That's a strong one. Uh, you know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to moot idols. Therefore I tell you, no one who's speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There's different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There's different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all people. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there's given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by uh, means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still another is the interpretation of those tongues. All these are the work of the one and the same Spirit who gives them to each one, just as he determines. The body's a unit, though it's made up of many parts. And though all its parts are many, they form one body, so it is with Christ. So pray with me. Lord, teach us from your word. Teach us how we might be released and free by your Holy Spirit. And uh, show us and demonstrate your power and your presence in small ways, in large ways, in continual ways through our life. And we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, this is a, uh, a profound passage because in it, it's basically 
lays out what you could see as being God's plan for how we function together, how we uh, exist together as a church and a community, and, and how we can serve, even though, and, and maintaining the fact that every one of us is different from each other. You know, uh, I, I've been in churches, I grew up in where everybody needed to be the same pretty much. You, you, you learn, you know, if you come in as a visitor or a pagan, you know, and, and then you meet Jesus and then all the pressure is to get you uh, church broke so that, so that you could uh, know how to function and know how to act and know how to talk. And pretty soon you learn how to dress right for that, which service you dress differently for. And, uh, and you learn how to speak in the same kind of ways. And, and everything is making a conformity. And I really, that, that's, a, that's not what this is saying. This is saying that God's Spirit takes us, the unique, individual, unrepeatable miracle that each one of us is, and we become more of ourselves. We become more unique, more uh, the way God intended from the beginning, less like the others. Now, uh, in, in our culture, we have sort of a tendency to reward uh, people who can do everything. Um, th there was a phrase for it years ago called the uh, uh, jack of all trades. It means you don't really uh, can do much, but you can do a little of everything, you know? And uh, which I obviously wasn't, but um, my dad was though. You know, he, he could kind of figure stuff out. He was an engineer and a contractor and a carpenter, and uh, and so he could figure stuff out and do a little of everything. So when we were missionaries in Africa, you know, you run out of gasoline, we well, try and figure out how to make the car run with kerosene and coconut oil, and okay, and uh, that kind of stuff. But that's not what. The scripture's telling us. That's not the way it says. It's actually that each one of us is going to be different, and each one of us is going to have different gifts and different ways of serving and, and different results in our ministry. And, um, and so I started thinking about what's, what's that like? What's that like? You know, and, um, and the picture I got in my mind was that, that, that the church is like a giant uh, toolbox. And, and each of us are different, you know, <laughs> weapons of fixing stuff or different implements. And, and we all have a different function. And, um, and like, like, you know, I'm not mechanical, so I'm not like some of you, uh, but I love to try and help my dad, you know, besides when he would pay me 50 cents an hour to stay out of the way. But, um, <laughs> but I try and help him. And, and some Saturdays we'd be working on stuff and, and I'm, tr I'm so excited to be side by side with him. And he'd go, okay, Johnny, you know, Get me the hammer. And so I come over and he goes, not the claw hammer, it's the ball peen I needed. You know, I mean, okay, I'll go get that, you know. And then, or hand me a wrench. Not the box end, you need the open end wrench, or the crescent wrench. And I go, oh my gosh, they're all different. You just said wrench, you know. I'm not even talking about screwdrivers. They're all different ones there too. And, uh, and I realized that for somebody who knows that stuff, they just assume it. And there's all this variety and the differences and subtleties and, and they're uh, the right tool for the right job kind of thing. I remember in, in California, uh, we were trying to fix the sprinkler system that wasn't working. So it felt like Seattle because it kind of rained as the water just kind of shot up in the air. Uh, but um, I decided I was going to fix it. So you have this PVC pipe, 5 eighths inch PVC pipe that... You're a builder, you know this. I'll just talk to you, Paul. So, uh, but what happens is uh, you run it along in the ground, and everything, but you have to cut it, and I didn't know how to cut it. So I got some knives out of the kitchen. I, the first knife didn't work, and then I tried a ster serrated uh, steak knife, you know, and that wasn't working. And uh, tried all these different things, nothing worked. And next door, Dan was a contractor. So I went over and knocked on his door, and I go, Dan, you gotta help me out. I don't, how do you cut five eighths inch? PVC pipe. I go, well, let me get you my 5 8 PVC pipe cutter. <laughs> and, he, and he went and got one. It was right. Wouldn't work for half inch, but or for the 5 8 PVC. He had the, the right thing there. And, and I, I'm starting to think of the church as this toolbox where each one of us has a function that, and, and we're called to serve and we're called to follow Christ together and to bring the, the giftedness that we are, that the Holy Spirit gives to us. And, and we have 
incredible value when we function out of our giftedness. Um, not so much when we try and figure stuff out on our own and, and uh, make things work. Um, Lloyd Ogilvie was a chaplain of the U.S. Senate for, for many years, and he wrote this devotional book, and I was reading it, and I, I wanted to share some with you. Is that all right to do? Can I read some of this? Okay, the question of authentic freedom is not what can the Lord do to set us free, but what can we do to free up our lives for him? That question forces us to wonder where in our lives we are tripping his glorious race. What areas have we kept back? What relationships of our lives are closed to him? The Lord frees us so that we can give him freedom. Get that? Authentic freedom is clearing the track, opening the way, removing the impediments, letting go with joyous abandonment. The Christian life begins when we're released from the prisons of our own making. The love of the cross unlocks the prison doors of memory. The past is forgiven. The future is open to new possibilities. We're liberated to accept and love ourselves as loved by the Lord. This unshackles our relationships. We become natural, affirming people who care. Life loses its drudgery. Motivated by love, we want to serve the Lord. All this is in preparation for the sublime freedom for which we were created. Our challenge is not to work harder for the Lord, but to give him freedom to work. That's our challenge. How can we open up our lives, open up our minds, open up our relationships and, and our world in such a way that we're not blocking what God wants to do in us or what he wants to do through us. I think Lloyd's onto something. I know for many years I've, I've prayed, Lord, you know, set me free. Uh, and, he's, and he usually answers, you know, not right now. Um, but, um, but I realized when uh, what Lloyd wrote there that we're confined by prisons that we made ourselves. It's our own issues, our own stuff, our own struggles, and, and it's locked us in, and we're not experiencing the freedom that God wants to have for us. And consequently, you know, our churches are, are, are we're not, our church isn't uh, experiencing freedom the way it should because we're, we're trying to figure things out instead of un letting God unleash His Spirit in us. And we sang today, Come, Lord Jesus, come, come, Holy Spirit. And we sang that, but do we experience it? Well, this passage says there's different kinds of gifts, there's different kinds of service, there's different kinds of workings. And uh, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you three little Greek words here, okay? Because I know you love language lessons. And I'm left-handed, so I blocked you people out. I'm sorry. And uh, and my handwriting is illegible, so it won't really matter. <laughs> the first one is there's uh, uh, the, the, the different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. The word there for gifts in the in the Greek word is uh, charismata, from which we get charisma, right? Person has charisma. The funny thing about this is, uh, we think of it, you know, charismatics are people who are really ex excited about the different gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? And so, um, but actually this first part of the word, charis, is um, the word for grace, where, where, where Paul you know, struggles with something. He said, I, I prayed and prayed that this problem would be taken away. And, and the message I got was, my grace, my charis, is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. So actually, the, uh, the spiritual gifts are expressions of uh, grace, given into our lives. And when we use our spiritual gifts in ministry, it's, it's, a, it's a, uh, treating people not like they deserve, giving people what they don't have coming. Um, and, it's, and it becomes releasing. So this is, the, this is the gift, but then it also says, there's different kinds, where am I here? There's different kinds of service. Now, 
the service is um, a word that you kind of know probably. Diakonia. Diakonia. It literally means um, serving at the table. You know, dining room. Uh, you know, a busboy or a waitress or something. Uh, diakonia. And, and from that, we get the word deacons, right? Uh, those who serve, uh, who uh, express service uh, in different ways, um, uh, recognize needs, find ways to mobilize to meet those needs. That's uh, diakonia. And, and so there's different gifts that God gives to us uh, to serve and to, and to build up the body. But, but then there's also different ways of expressing it. Not everybody has the same ministry. Not everybody does the same stuff. You know, God may be calling you in a dramatic way this year to, to focus on ministry among the poor. He may be uh, uh, calling you to do ministry among the, the people on the upper levels of the floors downtown, uh, who we might be jealous of, but God's calling you to, to share Christ with them and serve them. It, it, it could be different. Um, and, and all of them are... Uh, given to us from the Holy Spirit. Now there's a third word here, and uh, this one's a little uh, a little bit unusual, but there's different kinds of working, it translates out. There's different kinds of working. Um, and uh, let me see. Energama. Energama. Energuma, different ways of working. It also means uh, the effect of something, the, the, re, the result, the, uh, how, how it plays out. Now, what, what does that look like to you? What word stands out to you? Energy, Energy. right? You know, I, I'm learning from Chuck. He's an electrical engineer and, and knows how to work the, the big dams that do the power and things like that. And uh, how do they produce energy from water going over a dam. You know, that's kind of mysterious. But the effect of that dam's work is the energy that's produced in it. Um, when you have a generator, it generates energy. You know, I wish I had one this morning, but I'm trying to find the same shoes. <laughs> you know, but um, an ergama. And they're saying that it means there's different results and there's, and there's different... Uh, uh, effects. There's different ways that, that this works out in our world. And so to, to judge each other based on the same kind of standards and criterion and evaluation is not a biblical model. The model is that, that, that the Holy Spirit gives us the gifts, the Holy Spirit calls us into service and, and shows us opportunities to serve, and the Holy Spirit is, re is uh, responsible for the working out of it. At what point are we in charge? At what point is this about us? Nowhere. It's not about us. See, and, and I, gotta, I struggle with this. I, I, you know that, you know. I'm a control freak on the wagon. Um, and uh, I consider going to church with you 90 and 90. 90 meetings in 90 days. That's what I'm going to do. But, um, you know, the thing is, we're not determining the giftedness. We're not determining the service opportunity. We're not determining the results and how things work out. That's not our issue. What is our issue? Take down the walls that block the Holy Spirit from moving through you freely. Take down the barriers in the church that block the Holy Spirit from moving through us freely. It's another way of saying, allow ourselves to be open for God to do something new, for God to do something fresh in us, uh, for God to uh, unleash us. Now, I know, you know, we've heard a lot about Seahawks, you know. Uh, so I'm not going to do a sermon on Seahawks totally out here, but, but um, I've been learning from Coach Larry Stone and because uh, he was a fabulous football player and coach. And so he's been teaching me things. And uh, and I asked him what is the what makes the Seahawks so special? And and of course, what does he say? They they do their jobs really well, and they trust the others to do their jobs really well. 
And so they, they're they working to encourage each other, to build up each other, to console each other. Uh, if they make a mistake, they don't put them over on the side on the bench. They come around them and encourage. And, uh, and even uh, Coach said halfway through the year, the big difference is we learn to love each other. That's the big difference. And, uh, and I thought, wouldn't it? That's a great thing. It, that's really a picture of what's happening here a little bit, where, where the Holy Spirit gives us each different gifts. And then he gives us opportunities to serve. And then he, he's responsible for the results. And we're free. We're free. I don't know about you, but I, I really value being free. And uh, today... You get a chance to do something that's, um, I think, very significant. And uh, I told you about there's little pieces of paper that say recommendations for elder, recommendations for deacon. Um, I want you to take that really seriously and say, Lord, you know, if I've got an attitude, I'd say, Lord, you know, take that attitude away. Uh, help bring to my mind, bring to my mind the face or a name, a reminder of someone who is gifted by the Holy Spirit, recognizes ministry, can turn the results over to you. And, and bring forth those names, and then at the congregational meeting, you know, we'll vote and, and pick some uh, and uh, out of your uh, selection. And the elders, in the meantime, will uh, go through the list and talk to people that you recommend and uh, prayerfully bring it together for you. And so um, I think that one of the keys for us as a church to become unleashed by the Holy Spirit is to stop waiting for somebody to do something. And instead, start looking around, the faces, the people, the conversations, uh, fighting for a cookie at the table, whatever it is that you're doing. And, uh, and as you look around, go, Lord, who can I affirm? Because I see a gift in them spiritual gift in them. Who can I affirm when, when I, I see them doing service that I may not be interested in, or maybe I am interested, but, but I see them t tuning in and, and caring and, and building up people. Um, and then tell them. I, I got to tell you, there, we, we had a talk today about um, emails and how easy it is to get critical emails. We're back in the coffee room, you know, blah, 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 and uh, somebody had gotten an email that, that they kind of reacted like, whoa, and, uh, and we talked about how easy it is to just send off a note, I don't like what you did, or, you know, that didn't work, you know, and, uh, and then somebody said, well, you know, if you really see something that's valuable and you like everything, we never write an email to that, because why would you? It's, uh, that's just what they do, you know. And uh, I would love for us to become unleashed as a church that calls out the giftedness and the ministries and the results and recognizes it, not waiting for an official recognition, but, but that you recognize it in each other and you call it out to each other. Now, I got a homework assignment for you. Okay, I want you to write down one word, okay? This is what you do this week. You're going to write down one word that is the uh, character, the personality trait that would describe the person that you would like to be known for, or for your, your life characteristic. What would that one word be that would kind of uh, express uh, where you'd like to end up when God's done with you? I usually, you know, when I've done this, I always pick something that I don't really have <laughs> going for me right now. Um, you know, uh, but that's okay. Make that the word. And then I want you to take this week and ask the Lord to show you what obstacles you can take down to become that word. So that, so that when people think of you, they think of that word. And just let the Holy Spirit do that and identify the obstacles and choose to take those down 
And you become, you'll become that as God works in your life. Okay, that's your homework. And uh, I think that's enough for today. Um, so let's pray. Lord Jesus, we need you so much. And we need you in ways that sometimes we're not even aware of. But you are. And so we thank you that you come to us in love and you come to us in uh, compassion. And you also come to us in strength. And so, Lord, make us strong by your spirit. Make us gifted by your spirit. Show us service by your spirit. And, and you, you show the results. Set us free. In Jesus' name, amen.